I'm back with another cheap Apple Watch knockoff. This time the unique claim is that it can measure your blood glucose levels simply through the watch. And it can also measure your heart rate, blood pressure, and has a step counter. Once I can get this tight box open, I see from the instruction manual that this is labeled as an F12 model smartwatch. The charge cable is USB-A to a proprietary magnetic attachment. Here's the back of the watch and its supposed health sensors. It looks identical to many of the other cheap watches that have these type of sensors. The watch has a really nice looking curved screen. It looks pretty high quality. There's a dial and a mic on the sides. The dial actually works this time and it's used to scroll the screen. The button press does not select what's on the screen however. Pressing the dial will bring you back to your previous screen or if you're on the watch face it will activate the main apps screen. To select what's on the screen you have to tap the screen itself. Let's take a quick look at the watch faces. This is the default one and it looks horrible. I can't even tell what time it is. Scrolling through the other built-in watch faces, I'm really disappointed. They all look like low quality with too much going on and colors that clash. And it makes it really hard to get the actual time on a quick glance. The user interface is the same one used by most of these types of smartwatches. Swipe to the right gets you the recent apps and a summary of the weather and date. Swipe to the left gets you the shortcut apps. You can customize which apps appear here, although it's limited to what they allow you. Oddly enough, the blood glucose app can't be added to the shortcuts. There are actually only six apps that they will let you add to the shortcuts when there are over 20 apps available from the main menu. Why is there this limit, especially on a watch that advertises it can measure your glucose? You would figure that they want this to be accessible easily. Swiping up brings up the settings menu to toggle Bluetooth audio, brightness, menu styles, etc. And yes, it has the mandatory, obligatory Apple Watch type of menu style that doesn't really work well. Swiping down brings you to your notifications and notifications will look like this. It's nice that they have the messaging platform icon next to the message. Now let's get on to the phone app to tie this together. The app that goes with this watch is called VFit. On the surface it looks a bit unrefined. Menu items are randomly capitalized or not. Some of the text is wrapped to the next line when there's still plenty of room left on the screen. Other than that it works fine. It asks to make a profile just like all the other fitness apps but you can just skip it. The first thing to do would be to go to the unit setting and change everything to what you would like. Otherwise, you'll have a hard time setting up your user profile such as height and weight. It has the usual fitness trackers which I don't really use but it's there. There are the usual reminders like a sedentary reminder to get yourself up and moving if you're just sitting there too long. There's a reminder to drink water and a menstrual cycle reminder if you can't keep up with those things with yourself. Common tools are here like the find watch. and music control settings, which is not what it seems like. We'll get to that later. Now back to the watch side. Let's look at the notifications. My primary use for a smartwatch is for notifications. I like to be able to get my notifications throughout my house without having my phone on me just by looking at my watch. So this function must perform well for me to be able to use this watch. A major weak point of this watch is the vibration motor. It seems to be installed on the top of the watch away from the back plate. I say this because when it vibrates I don't feel it on my wrist. But I feel it on my sleeve or I hear it vibrating but I don't feel it on the surface of my skin like other watches can do.
As for displaying the notifications, this watch does an acceptable job. I only say acceptable instead of excellent. That's because instead of a chronological list, messages from the same contact will be consolidated and it can get a bit confusing on who sent what first, if that matters to you. I assume it's to match the style of how we get messages on our texting app or any other messaging app as is grouped by contact also. But the smaller screen makes it harder to manipulate the messages. I would rather just see a list of incoming messages as they appear. Incoming messages will wake the screen with the message displayed and buzz you so you don't have to navigate into the consolidated messages notification screen if you catch it in time. The watch can hold up to 20 notifications total. The unread ones are in orange and the red ones are grayed out. But this is the status on the watch, not from your phone. You could have read the messages on your phone, but it'll still show up as unread on the watch. One noticeable improvement this app has over previous apps I've tried is the notifications option. This will give you toggles for every single app you have on your phone. And you can fine tune exactly what you get notified on. This is the first cheap smartwatch app I've used that has this function. Others simply gave me a limited list of more popular apps. This almost makes this watch fully usable for me. The next important thing for me are the watch faces. I need to be able to look at my watch and tell what time it is. But the built-in watch faces are just really trashy. So many colors and busy designs, it makes it hard to tell the time at a glance. The only ones that let me see the time would be this fake handbag logo type analog face. Or the simpler ones that look like the designers didn't really try at all and just threw some colors and shapes together. The ones you can install through the phone app store are not any better. A few holiday inspired ones and some plain low effort looking ones. You can also upload your own image and set the position of the time, date and other health information. But the placement of the information is very limited. There's only two locations on the screen, upper or lower, and you can have secondary information above and below that. You can choose the color of the info, but the font and the font size can't be adjusted. I find that simple dark backgrounds and a light colored font color makes it easy to read, but then it makes the watch look really crappy because you don't have a nice watch face. Since we're talking about checking the time, let's talk about the lift to wake function. This function works as any other budget watch, meaning there's a slight delay. I leave this feature on anyways because there are times when I can't reach over and tap the button to turn on the screen. There's an amusing function called an off screen watch face to mimic an always on display. It even gives you a warning that the brighter the screen, the shorter the battery life. You also set the lock timer, which starts after the first screen lock time. So in reality, it shows a minimal dial after the watch locks from the system timeout timer. Now it shows the minimal watch face for another duration which you set with the lock timer. If the watch was on to begin with, I most likely already got the time. Why would I need a minimal watch face? unless it's there 100% of the time as a convenience, but it is not. It's just to make it act like there's a battery saving minimal watch face feature. Which brings me to the battery life. I wore this watch daily with the brightness set right in the middle and a 10 second time to lock. The battery lasted about five days, which I found to be pretty good. I get notifications throughout the day. It can fully recharge in about an hour. For the phone call function, this watch pairs as a Bluetooth audio device to your phone so you can use it as an external mic and speaker. You can actually listen to your music and videos through your watch, although I don't see why you would want to, but you can. It has a useful function on the watch to toggle this function as it makes sense that just because you have the watch on, it doesn't mean you actually want to use it as a mic or speaker. But you might want to if you don't have the phone with you and you get a phone call.
If you happen to have the Bluetooth audio switched off, you will still get your phone call notifications. You just can't answer, but you can end the call so your phone won't keep ringing. If you happen to have the Bluetooth audio activated, you can use the voice assistant function, which simply triggers the Google Assistant in the background and plays the responses back through your watch. What's the weather in Washington, D.C.? Right now in Washington, it's 81 degrees and sunny. Today, it'll be sunny with a forecasted high of 81 and a low of 59. It's a neat feature and I'm sure it could be handy under certain situations. I talked about having a music control app in the beginning and why it's a little bit unconventional. That's because if you don't have the Bluetooth audio connected, it won't even control the music. You need to activate the Bluetooth audio and have the music playing from the watch in order for it to be able to control your music player. To fix this issue, you would switch off media in your Bluetooth setting for this device. Here's some of the useless apps that came on the watch. The location app, which shows a picture that I'm in South America and gives some GPS coordinates which don't match location on the map or my real location. There's a breathing app that guides your timing. I'm assuming it's to relax. Let's have some fun and test the blood glucose sensor. It's well past noon right now, I haven't eaten for about 18 hours, so my blood glucose should be well below 100 milligrams per deciliter. I'm going to take 5 readings from this watch, triggering the test using the built-in app for ease. Then using my real sensor, I took 3 readings. One thing to note is that the unit of measure on this watch is not the typical milligram per deciliter here in the United States. It uses millimoles per deciliter, but you can simply convert it by multiplying by 18. The five readings from the watch are 5.78, 6.1, 6.01, 6.52, .6 and 5.88 millimoles per deciliter. Converting that to milligrams per deciliter, that comes out to 104, 110, 108, 117, and 106 with an average of 109 milligrams per deciliter. On my real meter, I got three readings of 80, 90, and 92 milligrams per deciliter, average of 87.3 milligrams per deciliter. According to the watch, I would be considered pre-diabetic, whereas the real meters put me in a normal range, according to the information from the American Diabetes Association. So judging by the actual functional features, for less than $50, I can still not use this watch daily. For the lack of a countdown timer, which I use for interval training, and a weak vibration motor that fails to notify me when I have notifications are the breaking points that stop me from using this watch. I like the price, the battery life, the notification filter from the app, and the bright crisp screen, but that's about it.